Yup, yup, yup. This is the HVAC School Podcast. I'm Brian, and this is a short episode, and we're going to talk about pumping versus compressing, as well as some other things. Some common confusions that I think can get the cartoons in our head mixed up and messed up and mixed around. And that's because as technicians, we don't often think in terms of math and graphs and charts and all that stuff. We think in terms of, like I said, a cartoon on our head, something that in our brain helps us understand how things work. And if we get things mixed up, we can get a little confused or rated. And that's what we're going to talk about. But before we do that, we want to thank our great sponsors. Fieldpiece at fieldpiece.com. Navac at navacglobal.com. Refrigeration Technologies at refrigetech.com. Carrier and carrier.com. I'm a fan of UEI combustion analyzers. And a big reason I'm a fan is because of their overall low cost of operation, their lifetime cost of operation. Now you can keep your UEI combustion analyzers at their best with the UEI Service Plus Guarantee. Book your annual recertification online at ueitest.com slash service. And here's what you get. Free shipping both ways. A warranty extension for one more year, up to 10 years max, and same day return shipping the day they receive your analyzer. Guaranteed. So don't miss out. Get the full scoop at hvcrschool.com slash UEI service. UEI service plus. More than a promise, it's your performance guaranteed. Let's talk about just the basics here, okay? And most of you probably know this, so hopefully I'm not covering something that's super stupid seeming to you, but understanding the difference between pumping and compressing. So when we're talking about pumping, we're almost always talking about a liquid. So vapor and liquid are both fluids, and they actually move very similarly. But a liquid is a much more dense fluid and is essentially incompressible. Most liquids are essentially incompressible. Can you squeeze the molecules a little bit more? Sure, you can, but the forces that you're dealing with just raise exponentially. And so it's a very, very little squeezing action that you can do there. Whereas with vapor, the molecules are more spread apart and you can compress and decompress them. So when we're moving a liquid around, it's basically pushing it through the system. Relatively incompressible, so you're not changing their volume much. Now, does the density of liquid change? It can, obviously, like one liquid to another liquid will have different densities. We know that. But also it's going to change based on temperature and things like that. But it's not going to change based on you trying to squeeze it with a compressor or something like that. And that's why if you have a compressor that has no flexibility within the compression chamber and liquid gets in there and it tries to smash that liquid, uh, it's going to destroy the compressor. As I mentioned before, a lot of modern compressors actually have the ability to deal with some of that. And some of that's just based on the tolerance within the compression chamber. But a lot of it is they build in some flexibility. Copeland calls that axial and radial compliance, the ability for the compression chamber within a scroll to move around a little bit. And that can help, at least in terms of not destroying a compressor when there's liquid present. But generally speaking, that's what we're talking about. When we say compressing, we're talking about compressing a vapor, taking it and squeezing it. And when we talk about pumping, we're talking about chasing it along. Uh, imagine a circulator pump. And the way that Dan Hollihan talks about circulator type systems or hydronic type systems, I think can be really helpful because you're essentially imagining a Ferris wheel. So imagine a Ferris wheel on a fair and you are creating a pressure difference by forcing them along. You're paddling them in one direction. And so there is a pressure difference. It's causing it to move, but it's not much of a pressure difference. And essentially, for every little bit that you move down at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, the exact same amount is coming back. And so you're just basically moving. I don't know how you want to think about it, but if you're moving people around the Ferris wheel, same thing is true in a liquid system because there just isn't any play. And that's how things like hydraulics work, hydraulic systems. On one end, you're going to move the exact same amount. The exact same amount of force is going to be applied on the other end. And when I say the exact same amount, I know it's not exact same, but essentially for all of our general purposes, that's how that's going to work. Whereas that's not the case in a pneumatic system. In a pneumatic system, there is compression. There is a buffer that goes on. And sometimes that can be helpful. So pneumatics is dealing with vapor or air or something that is in the gaseous state, something that's a gas. I don't know why I have to say things so many different ways, but that's important to recognize. So pumping is when you're essentially chasing liquid along. You're not able to compress it. Compressing is when you're smashing it together. And like we mentioned in the last podcast and things like recovery machines, that becomes important because for most modern recovery machines, you need to be able to eat liquid. That thing needs to be able to take liquid and move it along. It needs to be able to pump it. 
And it also needs to be able to compress once you get to that phase where you're just dealing with vapor. And so there are systems that can do both. They just have to be designed for that purpose. But then there's also things that you're going to hear more and more. So, for example, liquid CO2 pumping systems, where if you're dealing, for example, with liquid CO2 and you're moving it through a space and you're using it to transfer heat and it is all liquid, you can pump it and use much less energy to move it along with a pump than you do with a compressor. And that's a strategy that's often being used in different systems where where you can use pumping to move things along rather than compressing, there's less energy needed. And so let's talk again, just through a couple other things here. We're going to talk about positive displacement and dynamic or non-positive displacement. So that's a term you'll hear sometimes. So a positive displacement system creates a trap and moves a fixed amount of fluid and forces it through the system. So it essentially traps it and then forces it through. That's how a scroll compressor works. That's how most of your circulator pumps work. So whether we're talking about a circulator pump with liquid or we're talking about a compressor, in both cases, you're doing that same thing. You're trapping it and you're forcing it through. Now, if you're dealing with a vapor, you can actually compress it. You can actually cause it to occupy now a smaller space because that vapor is compressible. If it's a liquid, you're basically just chasing it along and the same amount's going to come back the other side. Now, some of you may say, okay, well, let's talk about a compressor. If you're only always moving a constant volume, it doesn't change because that's what we're saying in positive displacement. You're moving a constant volume through that compressor. Well, then how come sometimes we move more refrigerant with the compressor than others? Well, that all has to do with the density of the refrigerant because refrigerant density does change a lot. And that's, again, something that's different in liquid versus vapor. Liquid does change with variations in temperature, and even it does change a little bit with variations in pressure, but nothing compared to how much vapor does. In vapor, if we have, say, a 40 suction pressure coming back to a system versus a 120 suction pressure, that is a significant variance in the density. So even though the amount of volume, the amount of boxes that that compressor is moving is the same because that compression chamber has that same amount of clearance and it's moving the same volume. The amount of refrigerant by weight or by mass flow changes significantly. And so a compressor is a constant volume, but a variable mass flow compressing device or positive displacement engine or positive displacement device. Compare that to something that's dynamic. And the best way that I can think of it would be like a prop fan, a condensing fan motor. Condensing fan motor is not designed to push against pressure. So it relies on velocity and kinetic energy to move the fluid. You're basically just beating it as it goes up. And the flow rate can vary based on pressure or different factors. So if you have a dirty condenser, you're not going to move the same amount. And it's not just a matter of density. You're literally not going to move nearly as much air. And the same thing is true even with standard blower motors. And you know that the more resistance there is, you're not going to move the same volume. Whereas with a compressor, you will move the same volume, but now it's just mass flow dependent. So if that density changes, if that mass flow changes, then that will affect it. And I know for some of you, this is like too much. Why does it matter? Well, it does matter because you're going to see things that you don't necessarily expect. Like, for example, knowing that a compressor is a fixed volume pump can help you understand some things that you see and why you don't get the efficiencies that you would expect when you have a lower suction pressure, that compression ratio changing. And it's not just as simple as, well, that compressor can't push against that. Well, no, actually it can because it's still moving that same amount. Now there is the matter of re-expansion and then you have a compressor that is actually bypassing slightly. We're talking ideally here. But again, that's all I wanted to identify. The difference between dynamic systems, that would be like a prop fan, Positive displacement, that's most of the pumps and compressors that we talk about, and the difference between pumps and compressors. Compressors raise pressure and temperature by compressing a vapor, vapor in, vapor out, higher, lower pressure and lower temperature in, higher pressure, higher temperature out, and pumps move liquids, liquid in, liquid out. There is a pressure change, but minimal, if any, temperature change, and they're going to be that consistent flow, just pushing it through the system. So that's it couple little things that if you already knew, roll your eyes at me. If you didn't know, hopefully it might help you down the road. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. (laughs) 